evening. Welcome to another session of the Sea of Glass. We're coming into the understanding of Mount Eva and in the understanding of the laws that in the heart of mankind, you know, like the laws of, of physics or the laws of, it's a set of laws that people have inside of them to work within themselves to understand what they have to understand. It's a set of laws that's made with the mind to understand. So, uh, read something, honey. <laughs> now we come to understand the curses for Mount Ebal. Then Moses, the great lawgiver, and the priest, meaning the feelings of love, said, Be quiet and listen. Make sure that you have love in your heart before you tell people that you love them. Do not be a hypocrite about love. Make sure that you understand the great laws of love to reveal for you the purpose of love. What is the purpose of love? You have it in the 12 sons of Jacob. Levi is a purpose where love becomes the most important thing in the salvation of the Lord. The, uh, Lord, oh, okay. the okay. Lord will save love because love is the greatest challenge of humanity to the soul and the mind of humanity. Love is a verb where the heart, the human heart rejects, and it is the most difficult verb to explain to the human heart. Love is also the greatest drag on the human race, and that is why the verb of love is so hard to explain to the human race. It is a verb that's very hard to enter the human mind because you have in your mind your loss and gain where love almost becomes impossible to understand. It, it should be co cooperative. Anyway, you got to understand the great power of love on Mount Ebal. You, you see, it, it, it's a verb that tells you that you have to love someone that you don't even know. And you meet someone on 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 the uh, on the street, and she's a total stranger, and you have to have it in your heart to understand this love that you have inside yourself because you build it inside the, the understanding of the scriptures. Power of the scriptures is to come to understand what you do within yourself to understand the greatest glory of all. It's love. Once you understand love, because you must understand here that the Lord has made this creation for the day of judgment. One day people will be judged according to, according to the understanding of the greatest power of love. You gotta be, hey, now this 50% of the population that's ready to kill you. And there's 50% of the population that wants to live in peace. That goes back to Adam and Eve's two sons, you know, Cain and Abel. You got to understand the power of it. When you come to the understanding of what is to love people, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big mountain a full of love, and it's a big mountain full of laws. You know, how do you love people that is? And that's what about Levi is all about. And that's the way I figure it out in the understanding of trying to love people that you've never seen before, people of another race, people. It's a big, huge mountain that you have to climb to get there. And once you get on top of it, you begin to understand how to love people. It's not a love that you have inside yourself, you know, like loving, you know, the opposite sex or anything. It's a love of humanity that God has made us to be in the freedom of understanding the greatest mountain of all is love. And once you climb that love, you begin to understand what the kingdom of God's all about. Before that, if you don't love people, you can't understand the kingdom of God. To understand the kingdom of God, you got to come and reach into the heart of your soul in the understanding that life is everlasting. And it's everlasting not for everyone, but it's everlasting for those that know how to love their brother as himself. It's the biggest mountain to climb there is because it's so high and so steep 
that you can fall off all the time. It's like everything else. You got to understand the glory of human intelligence. How about it, Mike? You got anything to add to that? See, love is very hard to understand. And it's no coincidence that it's like that because there's a great value in it. It's one of the greatest values that there is, is to be able to understand it. And you can have 100 people give you the answer to what they think love is, and most of them will be right because there's so many facets to it. And it's like, again, I say it's, it's made difficult on purpose because it's such a great sacrifice in it. And we understand as we go through and understand spiritual wisdom that anything worth having is not going to be easy. Anything worth gaining, you have to go through the sacrifice to get it. And love is no different. We always, we, when we talk amongst ourselves, we always um, understand love. And, and I try to understand love as, as in this way, that you have to try and love the people in your life that you come across that are hardest to love. The people that you, you, you find that it's very difficult because sometimes they can be mean people and they can be angry or they try your patience or they don't necessarily have the look that, that you think they, that, that is attractive to you or they've got a physical disability or a mental disability or whatever. And it's difficult to love people. It's hard, but that's the point because if you can love those people that you come in contact with in your life that are the hardest to love, then you can love anybody because you understand love better and you can understand and you can love those people that are easy to love as well. That's why it's important to really understand and and that you have to go through the sacrifice so that you can you can learn what this is. And that is I could tell you that I understand love 100 percent, but I don't. But that's something that I do understand is that you should try and love those that are hardest to love because that will help you to love just about anybody. And we're gonna see more, go ahead, Rita. The way God has created the human mind is to be partners with the heart of humanity. He put loss and gain in the mind for this purpose. The mind contradicts the spirit and there is a battle between the spirit and the mind. The mind has no feelings and only understands when it gains something in value. If you have a loss in the value of giving freely for love, this is a battle inside yourself. The heart must bring back love without gain, and this is when you must fight in that battle between heart and spirit. Your gain is important to the mind because it has no feelings like the heart has, but some of these feelings are not there for the mind to see. You gotta understand here that you're climbing a mountain here. Every time you climb a mountain, like you, you, you climb, you know, where Moses received the law, and you have to climb it to get there. It's not something that you do because, you know, it's something that you do because you want to be a person that loves his brother as himself. Because this is the greatest commandment that the Lord has given us. It's to love one another. And to love one another is the most hardest thing to do because you're climbing a very steep mountain. And you can fall any time. And this is what love is. Love is not the understanding that you come to the agreement of the greatest power of all, but it's to understand the love of humanity. To, you know, you really have to understand that loving humanity is hard because you have all kinds of different understanding in there. And you have to go through and climbing this tough mountain that is so steep and so hard to climb that in order for you to get on top of that, on that greatest mountain of all, you have to go to the understanding where you come to live with the presence of other on earth. And you know, if you, if you look at it in the right way though, if you make yourself lovable to other people, and if you try to, you know, greet people when you see them, no matter who it is, 
you can love almost anybody, but you have to climb the mountain to get there. And that's the way Mount Abel is all about. It's to cross over into the understanding of the greatest power of all is to climb deep and high in order to get to it. And once you get on top of that mountain, you can see the world as the world is. Once you understand that the world is not perfect and it's not made perfect for you to love, you have to make it perfect inside yourself. And you have to go to the understanding that you are within yourself climbing a mountain so you can love all the people of the world. It's not easy to love a Chinese or to love, uh, you know, a different type of person, you know, it's not easy, but you got to understand that the Chinese need to be loved like everybody else. The black needs to be loved like everybody else. And you got to love people as they are. You cannot make them make you love them. You have to make yourself love them. That's the way it is. And it's not something that you got to see a person that's got to look at you in the different ways, and he's gonna try to pick a fight with you. You gotta understand that love is such a deep power inside of us that we have to come to understand that this is the power to be able to understand. And when I wrote the book, I mean, I kind of forget about Mount Ebay, but that's the greatest thing that you can do is to climb this mountain so steep and so high that every time you love a person, you make a step on that mountain to get to the top. And believe me, you have to get there when you get on the top and see the world, or really, really the world the world is. You can't see it from above. You can't see it from your mind. You gotta see it from your heart. This is the way it is with love. What the greatest power of life on earth is to understand the love of the heart. Mike, you got anything to add? See, when you love people that are the hardest to love in life, um, you know, that includes people that you say, well, well, you, you know, a lot of people look at these people like criminals and, and, you know, people that think differently than you and believe differently than you. And you have to understand that these people you know, deserve to be loved and they need to be loved just like everybody else. You don't have to agree with them and you don't have to say, well, it's okay what they're doing because there's some people, they do things that are just not good for the human race and not good for mankind, but they do need to be loved. They need to be loved in the sense that you say, well, they're a person just like anybody else. They're no better or worse than anybody. And, and, and you're not better or worse than anybody else. So you love them and you say, well, I want them to understand and I want them to go through the process of life to understand what's going on. See, it's not true love if you say to somebody, well, like when they talk in the scripture about forgiving people and, and you say, well, for, because forgiving people doesn't mean I, I want them to to not I want them to get away with what they did I don't want them to go through any suffering or any no that's part of the sacrifice and that's what you should want for people because there is there is no other way in the human race that we learn is from when we make mistakes and when we have to suffer the consequences of those mistakes that's how we learn because we understand okay well that didn't work out so well I don't want to do that I shouldn't do that anymore if I if I want things to work out the next time. So you have to go through that process. And it, it's not true love to, to wish that somebody doesn't go through that natural process of learning. That's because that's how we were created. That's the process of learning that we were created as human beings to go through. So that's exactly what we need to do. So this is important to understand that that's not true love if you if you want to excuse somebody and say, well, it's okay that they did that. I mean, you understand why they did it, because they didn't know any better, or because they choose to make bad choices, even though they were shown before, say the error of their ways, or that they shouldn't do that. So it's okay to say, um, 
those things, but to say, well, I'm going to let them get away with it and I'm going to excuse their behavior. There is no excuse for behavior like that, except the fact that they either don't know what they should be doing or they ignore, they know what they should be doing and they ignore it. So that's part of love as well is to say, okay, well, well, I need to hold them to that to make sure that, that, that they can learn the lessons they need to learn so that they understand that this is not a good thing to do. Or even your own self in your life to say, okay, well, I need to stop doing this. That's not good for, for me or not good for other people. And that's important to understand. Now, the mind, like Rita said, it works on the principles of loss and gain. It doesn't really understand in spiritual terms like the spirit does, which is why you're, the house you build in spiritual understanding, the spirit has to be the foundation because the spirit has to lead the mind. The mind can't lead the spirit. So you have to understand that in the scriptures, these are spiritual teachings meant to be understood by the spirit. And so even though there's physical examples and physical people and physical objects and things, it's not what needs to be worshipped. It's the spiritual things. And that's what's important to understand. And we're going to see more as we go ahead. Go, Rita. Okay. And I wanted to add to we're talking about the uh, God's greatest commandments to love everybody as you as yourself. <laughs> And that's to treat everybody. And to remember is that God created all these people. So what would God do in treating these people? He loves them the way they are. Okay, that's all I wanted to add. No, and that's good because that, that's important to understand. That is the greatest commandment. The two greatest commandments, and, and, and I say this all the time, but the two greatest commandments, when, when people ask Jesus about that, he said the two greatest commandments are love God above all and treat your fellow man the way you would want to be treated. Right. Now, the reason why those are the two greatest commandments, and I've said it before on this show, but the reason why those are the two greatest commandments is they teach you the two most important things in life, how to have a relationship with God and how to have a relationship with other humans. And, and when you do those things, all the other commandments and all the other laws like the laws about adultery and the laws about the Sabbath and the laws about, they fall into place naturally after that. You, you'll naturally say, okay, well, when you figure out how to love and treat people the way you want to be treated, well, the laws of sacrifice fall in right behind that. So when you, when you learn how to do that, you, you do that through the sacrifice and you, well, what's the sacrifice? So now you learn that. And that's why those are the two most important because you'll keep holy the Sabbath if you truly love God above all else. That will naturally fall into place. So that's why those are the two most important. Go ahead, Mary. Your mind will always favor a gain over a loss. So understand well here that it is the battle of the wedding feast. You need the mind to gain the power of restoration in your spirit where you take on a gain in feelings that gave compassion to your feelings but not to your mind. Try to understand the difference when you give something of value to someone but the mind finds no value in it. In the state of the mind, you have a contradiction between mind and spirit. This is where the battle is between the weakness of the mind and the compassion of the spirit. And it's the battle that you must win to cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan that the Lord gives you to possess. You understand that the battle between the mind and spirit is the wooden feast. You got to learn control from the compassion of the heart in order to understand love. Unless you understand the compassion of the heart and the compassion of the spirit, you cannot love. Take that thing that happened today there in, in Maine there, where the guy went in there with a, a gun and shoot 18 people and, and wounded seven. You know, you got to understand that this person cannot be, you know, of, the, of his right mind. He's got to be losing something somewhere along the way where his hate has totally destroyed his heart. And you think a human being that does stuff like that is very hard to love, is very hard to accept. But you have to accept the power of what is love. Love is not something that 
you're always there kissing people and loving. Love is something that you have to fight inside your soul in order to gain the value of others. You have to fight inside yourself every day of your life to gain a value on people that you cannot find a value in. And you have to come in to the understanding that this value is the power of your, you know, of your spirit that comes in the forgiveness of life and the understanding. Now, forgiving people is not the way to love, you know. And as the Christian keep on saying all the time, forgive them and you now. You have to be fair. God is a fair God. You have to be fair with people. If somebody hurts you real bad, you got to hold it against them until you come to understand the value that this person was sent there for a sacrifice, a sacrifice to make you understand that what you didn't do to love other people. It's the battle inside yourself that counts. It's not the battle of the earth where you fight with people and try to hurt them. And if we watch TV, you always have a good guy that, that beat people and, and faster than others and all that and killed. See, this is not the battle of love. Battle of love is to be able to come inside your soul and to look inside your soul for the purpose of the gain of understanding and to understand a little bit better about people. This way here, you do what you're supposed to do when it's the right time to do it. You know, you say the right words. Don't use kind words when you need to use hard word. You have to use what you need to make love happen. You cannot go there and just say, well, oh, you're right, you did that, you did No, you have to use common sense and tell them common sense because love comes through common sense. It comes there. And you know that when a person is fine rolling inside his heart, he changes his heart. That's the way it is. But you have to. You cannot say, I forgive you. You know, <laughs> the Christian of the world believe that, that you have to, you know, and, and all the Muslims and everything, but they think that it's right to, and then they get so angry at themselves, they go and they destroy and start a war against someone with hate because you cannot come to the understanding of love through hate because hate, all it does is goes to the bottom of the, and it does not, come to understand the greatest power of love that there is on earth. To understand love, he has to understand the way God has made us to love. And try to be fair with others is extremely important. Okay, Mike, what well, you got? So, Roger mentioned this shooter that, that's in Maine, <laughs> and it's easy to think, well, you might think to yourself, well, I would never do that. Or you think about like what some of these members of Hamas are doing to the Israelis or the Israelis are doing to the Hamas because everybody does stuff to everybody. But the thing, and you say, well, I would never do something like that. Well, it's possible that you could, you, you haven't yet, and, and you may never do it, but it's possible for everybody to behave in an irrational manner. And there's times when every one of us has, has behaved in an irrational manner or out of the ignorance that we didn't know how to handle situations. And so the thing is, it's important to realize that, that that's where that all comes from. It, it's not, and this is the thing that, that, that I take issue with religion. It's not that people themselves are good or evil, righteous and holy, or, or 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 evil. It's the ideas that you chose that you choose to have inside of you, what you choose to believe in, and that's why people can change themselves and change what they believe in, and 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 come to decide it says this doesn't make any sense to do this to my fellow man, or no, it makes sense that I should do this. That's why it, it's not like people say where oh, people are just evil and there's, and there's and there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you can do about other people because they have to take care of it themselves that's the thing that we were all granted from the lord is that we have to take care of we have to come to the understanding each one of us inside of our own hearts just between us and the lord and you can ask other people for advice but ultimately it has to be between you and the lord to say okay well well 
the Lord will give you the wisdom. If you rely on other people, then you're relying on the fact that, you know, people are going to take advantage of you and not tell you the truth and, and, and things like that. And that's where a lot of that comes from. People get angry because they, they weren't told the right thing or doesn't make sense with how they're feeling. And that's the other thing is you have to honor the feelings that are inside of you. So you have feelings to be happy or to be sad or angry or confused or, or you don't know something or you have all those feelings just like when you have to use a bathroom, you have those urges and those feelings, so you go. When you're hungry or tired, you have to act upon those. It's the same thing with, with the spiritual feelings you have inside of you. You have to act upon those. And that's really important to understand because a lot of religions don't, don't teach that. They teach that there's plenty of stuff that God created to be absolutely holy inside of us that aren't and that should be, should be resisted and fought against. And, and, and that's simply not true. And you will find that out if you ask the Lord and say, okay, well, well, are these feelings holy? Because I, I kind of have that feeling that they might be and, and what to make of it. That's important to understand. And we're going to see some more. Go ahead, Rita. And isn't it true that every human being is, has good feelings and bad feelings? That's right. Sure it is. Every, every human being has the ability inside of them. Yeah. To to everybody's been angry in their life, and yeah. if you don't understand, um, I've I've said to myself, which which a lot of people don't do, but but you look at those situations like what happened in Maine or all of these mass shootings that happened, and, and you you, I've looked at it and I said I've been angry at people before, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Mm -hmm you know, hurt people. And I've decided that I don't want to hurt people. I've decided that when I'm in a position to, to like I am here on the show, to, to help people understand things that they might not know, um, or to at least point them in a direction. Again, you have to go ask the Lord and the Lord will tell you, but I've made it, I don't want to tell people something that I don't believe to be true because it, that it, it has to be true because that's a great responsibility. So I could easily lie to people. I could easily mislead people and cheat people. I could easily hurt people and kill people just like anybody can. But I've made up my mind when I've seen it that it's not something that I want to do. So that's why I'm, I try to be careful not to do it. But there's people that haven't visited that. And they haven't decided that. And so when those feelings come up inside of them, they just act upon it because they, they've not really thought it out ahead of time. And, and that's part of the problem. These are the things that people don't talk about. And, you know, they want to ban guns and they want to they want to, you know, pass all these laws and and execute people and all this stuff that do this. Stuff. But but it really doesn't go to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is figuring out how to get along with, with one another and how to deal with these feelings that are inside of you so that you can, you can say these feelings have no power over me anymore. And, and then that's more towards the root of the problem. Go ahead, Rita. When the Lord created the mind, the wife of the spirit, he knew that there would be a great battle between the two, just like in your physical life. A man and a woman are the contradiction of weak against strong, and this will always be a strong battle. But this is where your victory belongs to the salvation of the soul. Your strong feelings must fight in strength against weakness, because even God, with all his might and glory, cannot find a better way to bring the value of intelligence to mankind. you, you got to travel into the understanding of the heart of a, a person that gets to that point. When a person is so angry inside himself, he wants to kill everybody that he can put his, his hand on. You know, you see, this guy must have fought a terrible, terrible body for years and years and uh, tried to hate people. He cannot con con compromise with himself. What is the understanding of others? You see, he fought and fought himself until it went and it was too late. His, his mind was gone. And that's all he does is hate. You got to come and stand between the battle of the feelings, between love and hate. You got to, if you go to the side of hate, you will hate dearly. 
And if you go to the side of love, you will love dearly. And that's the way it is. You got to learn to love people. And you don't love people because they're good, because they're bad. You love people because they are people and they are the same as you. That's the way you love people. Try to make understanding of the power that you have inside yourself to understand yourself in the, in the greatest battle between mind and spirit. Because the, the mind is terribly lost without the spirit because it has no compassion. All you have is loss and gain. If you gain something, you go for it. If you lose something, you go against it. That's the way the mind works. And what happened when it breaks inside of a human being and destroys a human being to that point of being angry at the world and killing all these people for no reason, this is what is, it is the understanding of life on earth. You gotta fight your feelings. You gotta fight against them. And it's, this is a battle that you have inside yourself. Everybody has this battle inside themselves. They want to be counted for it. They want to be loved. They can't find that. So they go to the other side. And that's what makes it so dramatic is to take a human being and try to understand what did he do? Look what he did. And you cannot come to compromise that. You have to come to understand that what you went through to get there and try to help people n not to get there, to understand that when somebody is that much, as much evil that gets into his heart, you cannot destroy that evil just that easy. And this is what comes to the birth of intelligence. The birth of intelligence is to be able to take <laughs> within your soul the glorifying feelings of what you are within the understanding of love. I tell you, when it, it comes to a mountain to climb, Mount Eba is got to be the, the highest mountain to climb because I've seen people hate people for no reason. You work with someone, you hate that person with, with passion. And this is so, and I, I lived that through my life on earth with people that hate one another enough to, to, to shoot each other. And that's what makes a person. And then you do this in anger, and then you wonder why that it led you to it. Because you never, never try to understand yourself as a person. You always, the time that everybody's against you, the whole world is on, not on your side, the law is not against you, and you, this is where you're wrong. You have to come to understand that if you don't love people, it's your fault. It's your own fault, you know. It's not the fault of others. This is where it is to love people and try to make sense out of people inside your heart. Go, go ahead, Mike. <laughs> See, that's a very good point because I would ask people, and, and this, is, this is a tough thing to do, but I would ask people to, that are watching this show now to, think, to, to look inside your heart and ask yourselves, could you love this person in Maine that killed all these other people? And I talk to people and I see them online saying, well, you know, he doesn't deserve anything and, and he should get the death penalty and he should this and he should that, but... but you know, string him up by his toenails or whatever people say, but but could you love a person like that? And and by that I mean, like I said earlier, could you understand that it's not the person that's evil, it's the evil spirit that got inside of them that they chose to believe in because they didn't know how to handle their the, the anger that they had or the feelings that they had, and it gets so out of control that it leads to something like that. And could you understand that 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 it's that and, and people don't even, when they get to a point like that, they, they're not rational. They don't realize what they're doing. And they do things like this. And could you love a person like that? Could you say, well, this is the reason why, but otherwise they're no better or no worse than I am. And if you've already made that decision that, okay, you don't want to hurt other people when you, and, and you try to deal with that. Not everybody does. Not everybody is able, knows how to do that and is able to do that. And, and 
you have to understand these things. This is a very hard person to love right now. And it's a very hard person for, for if you think about it, for, for you to love, for me to love. But, but these are the people that if you can love people that do this and, 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 and people that do all kinds of stuff like this and, and governments around the world that don't treat people right and all this stuff, it's, those are the hard people that if you can love them, then you can love just about anybody. And that's important to understand. And Rita mentioned earlier when she was reading about, okay, the male and the female, which again, I say this all the time, but, but you can never say it too many times. And the scriptures, they don't talk about the physical male and female. So people complain and women complain that, well, you know, the, the female is responsible for original sin and Eve gave Adam you know, told Adam to eat the apple and all that, but it's not physical, it's spiritual. We talk about the mind and the spirit. The spirit is male and the mind is female. Again, we talk about Mother Earth and your Father in Heaven. And and what that means is it, the mind, it's the female, through the loss and gain, which isn't as strong as, as the spiritual understanding, which is why they say that the mind must be ser serve the spirit the female must serve the male it's not that the it's not that the scriptures are saying that the physical male is above the physical female they're talking about the spirit is above the mind because the spirit understands more eternally the spirit understands it's more powerful and that's what you should be building your your understanding on so the spirit must lead the mind not the other way around and you can't have a true understanding unless your spirit is leading the mind. If the mind is leading the spirit because you only understand in loss and gain and you didn't develop your spiritual understanding, well, you're going to have a problem eventually because you're not going to understand the things that are important to understand. That's why it, it's important that you have to turn the nouns into verbs, as we, as we like to say. You have to understand that it's a spiritual book meant for the spirit, which is eternal. The body just dies out and then you have it another body and it dies out and you have it another body. But it's it's the spiritual things that are more important. And that's the foundation that you have to build your understanding upon. Go ahead, Rita. Next, we come to understand the curse of the man who worships a graven image or casts an idol. Fully understand that these laws are real and can be trusted. Whoever carves an image or casts an idol worships against the Lord God. The Catholic Church, Christianity, and all houses of worship are full of idols and the image of Jesus that they worship in front of God. Do not ever place an image before the Lord and claim salvation through this detestable practice of falsehood that the Lord hates the most in the world of men. The Lord tells you in the scriptures not to believe in this detestable practice of humanity by false religion on earth. This is where a human being goes to church on Sunday morning to worship the image of Jesus and all the idols that they hang on the walls all around them. They bend their knees to worship a false god, but they think they are worshiping the real god. God has led them in their free will to create such a poor value of God Almighty where they place saints and idols before the Lord our God. They brought their physical value instead of their spiritual value to the salvation of their soul, and this is why they have failed. You, you know why a person fail? Why would a person like this man in, in Maine fail to love his brother? Because he didn't have it inside of himself. He, he, he threw it out of himself. He made people think that they're all evil and he was going to kill them. You know, you see, it's all part of loss and gain of the mind. The mind tells you that these people, these people are all losers and you can kill them because he feels like it. And that's not the way it is in real life. The greatest power is to be able to understand the Lord your God. God is the truth. And unless you go to the truth and worship the truth inside your heart, you can't go and say, well, I'm worshiping God. I, oh, Jesus, help me here. You know, you can't say these things 
And if you say these things, you don't understand what God is. God is the truth, and the truth is God. You cannot change that. You've got to go into the power of the truth that's inside yourself. At that point, the Lord will come inside of you and gives you the glory of human intelligence where you will not hurt people. But what happened is everybody thinks that God is some kind of a big guy up there. God is not there. God is the truth that lives inside of us, it lives inside of might, lives inside of me. And everybody has some truth inside of them. You got to understand the truth that's inside everybody because God lives in every man. He doesn't live just in one man or, when, or you know, if you listen to religion, they tell you that Jesus was the only one that ever felt God. You know, it's not true. We all have God inside of ourselves because the Lord is the truth, is the spirit of truth that lives there. And you got to pray to that spirit. This is the spirit that I pray to me. I pray to the spirit of the truth. Because if I don't understand anything in the Bible, I go to the, the source of the scriptures. I go to the tree, refuge city, try to understand, does that make sense? Is that part of common sense? Is that part of reality? Then I look at that and I say, I don't believe that. I believe what makes sense in the truth, in common sense, and reality. And that's how you worship God, with those three things inside of yourself, truth, common sense, and reality. This is what God is. God is the truth. And unless you worship the truth and try to learn the truth, this is why you fail in life. You fail because... You don't listen to your heart telling you what is true, what makes sense, and what's real. You know, people believe, you know, they think the Bible, they say, well, Jesus is walking on water. No, man, has never walked on water. That's not true. This is something that was, that was done in the spiritual value that common sense will walk on reality. This is what it's all about. The Son of God is common sense, and it walks on reality. It gives you an understanding of what it is. But there's no man that walked on water, including Jesus. It never happened before, and nobody never did. And the same thing with all the miracles. Don't believe in the miracle that's in the Bible. Believe in what they mean. You know, if, if God, you know, if Jesus healed a man that was blind, that means that you will be healed from your spirit of your blindness of spiritual value. Everything is a part of understanding the scriptures in the spiritual way, not in the way that we think it is. It's spirit, and in spirit, you understand things different. You, you rise yourself up to the spiritual part of the understanding, and next thing you know, you understand what it means and what it is. And once you understand what it means and what it is, you come to understand that God is not a magician. God is not a big power up there to hurt people. God is down in your heart, in the truth. What is the truth does to you? If you fail in truth, you will fail God. If you fail to worship the God of truth, then you cannot worship what God is. God is the truth, and he's inside of us, and he tries to make us understand the truth any way he can. So this is the way the Bible was written that way. So you can come to understand that the Lord God of heaven is the truth, and he's also common sense because he has a son that's part of it. It's like an understanding of the truth that slipped from, from God to mankind, common sense. This is what we have. And then we have the angel of reality in front of us that tells you, is this true? I don't believe in any miracle. I don't believe that, that, that Moses opened up the sea with a piece of stick. I believe that this happens. The whole thing can open inside of you. It's a spiritual understanding that you have to open to a new world of understanding a spiritual value inside yourself. This is what it's all about. And you gotta understand that you have to use the laws of the spirit. The understanding of the laws of the spirit, you know, the Ten Commandment himself, you know, the laws of the Sabbath. Understand everything and try to 
memorize everything inside yourself, and on the seven days you'll have the answer. This is all, this is how I, I understood the scriptures. You know, I'm not a very intelligent man, but I understand the scriptures through the understanding of the scriptures. Tell me that this is what you're gonna do, the root of the scriptures to get to God. This is what it is. That's all that the scriptures are. It's a root to get to understand the spiritual part of us. Thank you. you know, you gotta understand that this is what God is. He is the truth. He's nothing else but the truth. And what he is, is the spirit of truth that lives inside of us. And once you begin to understand that, you begin to understand God. Okay, Mike, go ahead. See, you have to understand, like I said earlier, that there are physical examples to in the scriptures to understand a greater spiritual understanding and spiritual wisdom. So when they talk about these things, you will understand it first with your mind, but it goes on to the spirit. It should go on to the spirit, which is which is the more powerful, which will lead the mind to because they're spiritual teachings. They're just used in a physical example. So when they talk about, okay, and l let me just say that if you belong to a religion that's not teaching you that it's spiritual, it's not physical, then it's not leading you toward the truth and toward the real one true God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. You have to understand. So if they tell you you have to go to a physical church, the church, the temple is inside of you. It's spiritual. Okay. And when they tell you like the communion, you have to eat the wafer or, or drink the, the, the chalice of wine. That's all physical. It has to be spiritual inside of you. You have to not put your faith into something that doesn't teach you it's spiritual and teaches you it's all physical because it's spiritual. The physical is just the example that, that, that leads you to understand it in the basics of it. Then you have to go to the, to the spiritual and that's important to understand. So you should not be believe and put all your faith into the basket of any religion that teaches you all these physical laws and physical rituals and physical, because it's all spiritual. So when they talk about the graven image, and when I first tried to understand that, I looked up in the dictionary, well, what is a graven image? Well, first you take the word graven, and graven means it's fashioned by the hands of man. It's carved, it's fashioned by the hands of man. So. Then you say, okay, well, an image. Well, first of all, with, with graven, so you think, well, okay, well, people will automatically come to the conclusion I can't, like, worship at a cross or an altar that's made out of wood or a, and, and, and while that's true, but it also means like the hands of man, like, like in the physical world, the mind. So it also means that you, you, you can't make up a physical understanding for something that's a spiritual thing and and say the lord forbid you to do that because you won't get away with it and so that's also it's deeper than just i can't worship a crucifix or a, or a statue or or a picture or anything but it's also the things you make up with your mind that aren't part of this true spiritual wisdom and when you get to the second part which is the image the image like when you think of an image like you open a book or a magazine or you go online and see a picture of the Grand Canyon or a picture of a car or a picture of a pizza. And you say, well, that's an image. That's a representation of, of something, but it's not the thing itself. So an image is the same thing. When you worship an image before the Lord, you're worshiping something that's a representation of, but it's not the thing itself. So a graven image, when you put the two together, what you have is something that the mind made up that's a facsimile of, but not the actual real thing of what God is, what Jesus is, what a sacrifice is, all the things that are in the, that are in the scriptures. That's why a graven image is so forbidden because it's something that the mind made up rather than what the truth is. And, <coughs> excuse me, if you are part of anything that teaches you to worship these things in the physical sense, you are worshiping against the Lord your God instead of in the direction of the Lord your God. And those are the things that are, that are 
that are going to be a problem. They're leading you away from God. This is why you have trouble and you don't understand the feelings that you have and you don't understand the things and that you read in the scriptures or that you see in the world around you. And the religions will tell you, well, you're just not supposed to understand these things. But you can understand these things and you are supposed to understand them because you won't get it right if you don't. This is very important that you know how these things work. And the Lord will tell you if you ask the right questions and, and you do it from the spiritual and not from the physical. And that's what's important to understand. And we're going to read more. Go ahead, Rita. Okay, well, I might conclude with this. Remember that God is spirit. And he will bring a curse on anyone in false religion who worships in the physical body where he refused to understand his true spiritual value. God will place a curse on anyone who worships in these false practices where they don't consider the spirit to be of value over the mind. If you try to save your soul, but in the physical way of the image of God, you will be under the Lord's curse in the restriction of not understanding a single thing about your spirit. You will come to know so little because you do not understand the scriptures. You have placed your false faith in an image of a false God, and you idolize saints of false value in a false religion that makes no sense whatsoever. Just look at your faith, and when you don't understand anything, and you have to depend on somebody else to explain it to you, that means that you have been cursed by the Lord Almighty. You got to understand that curse now. That curse is very important here. You understand that God, you know, why did God send Jesus to the world? That was not a blessing for mankind like, like the Christian prophet. That was a curse on mankind. Jesus came into the world as a curse. And he came and he was a good man and he healed people and all that. But you got to understand that God said, I'm going to give you a false god to worship, an image of a golden calf. I'm going to give you that image. And that's why you, you have been cursed by the Almighty God because religion, everything that re organized religion has ever done, it's trying to make you understand through your physical understanding of mind into a spiritual understanding. Instead of trying to understand that Jesus was a, a, a good man and you live for the purpose of, of, of his life, his only life, and then he was not accepted. That's because the people always believe that God is some kind of a big image in the sky, and whoever comes behind him is an image of God. Jesus is nothing more than a man that lived 2,000 years ago, and you cannot worship Jesus in front of God because you're destroying the very purpose of God himself because God is not an image. He's the understanding of truth inside of us. We all have truth inside of us. Worship that truth. It comes over there. Once you come, me, I love when I discover something that I cannot understand, and I go to the Lord to understand it. This is the greatest gift that I gave, that I receive in my life, to be able to understand the understanding of the scriptures and the spiritual value. That's the greatest thing. And, and God is that truth that lives inside of you. And he gives you the truth when you want it, when you ask for it. He gives it to you. And next thing you know, you take a thing like the, the, the hardest thing to understand is the previous huge city, because you think they're cities. They're not cities. They're teaching. And the, and the city is a teaching that gives you the understanding of that teaching. God is the truth. And if you understand the truth, you understand God. This is what I want to leave you with in the understanding of truth. You want to add anything to that, Mike? I want to say that, and Rita, please hold up the cover of the book, yeah. that this is the Sea of Glass, and you can find out more information online about the Sea of Glass, and I'm very grateful if you're tuning in, if you like what you hear, I suggest that you, you can keep watching our show and keep listening, and if you don't like what you hear, then you should do yourself a favor, and not keep tuning in and find something else to watch because the word is not meant
for everybody, like religion tells you. The word is meant for those who desire to truly desire to know what the truth is. So if it makes no sense to you and you don't want any part of it and it upsets you or angers you to hear this, it's not meant for you and you should go and turn the channel and find something else to occupy your time. But if it is something that interests you, you should ask the Lord about it and understand more and keep tuning into the show if you like it. And that's all I have to say. Just open your heart and the Lord will do everything else. Open your heart to the Lord of truth, the truth itself. Follow us on Instagram at nutmeg.tv.